following video contains spoilers. If you are concerned with obtaining spoilers, well then why in the world would you click on a video titled Spoiler Alert? Ha! Reevaluate your life. Enjoy! I get that this is supposed to be a spin-off to Full House, but they didn't even attempt to make this a different show. Fuller House Season 1. What's up guys, I am Angel Tony Pimenton, aka Mini Tangle, and this is Fuller House Season 1 Review. As you all know, Fuller House is a spin-off to Full House, where it stars three adults raising three daughters. And now, we have Fuller House, where it's three women raising three sons, with with the daughter in the mix too, I don't, it's, yeah, I, don't, I don't see the point why that's needed, but that doesn't matter. Four out of five stars. It was going really good to five stars up until the fifth episode, and then after that, episode six, it just went down the crapper. I don't know, like it was just really bad. Yeah, the only way I could describe how terrible it was, it was like this year's halftime show at the Super Bowl, like where it was all going strong with Coldplay, and then Bruno Mars was like, eh, and then Beyonce came in and just like, <laughs> and then it was like a huge explosion, you know, like it was terrible, and then like the SpongeBob guy who goes, oh my leg, my leg. screams, and you hear it, and it just, it was just, it was it just fell apart. Fuller House really is the mini me to Full House. And it's kind of lame too. Kind of false advertising if you ask me. We have this advertisement, all these promos this past few months before it came out of showing the whole cast and the whole cast is not in this show. I specified that in the previous review and I'm still mad about it. Sure there is cameos of the guest stars throughout the season but it's just not the same. It stars Candace Cameron Bure, or however you pronounce her name, DJ. Uh, she kind of plays like the Danny Tanner of this generation. The boring, responsible, no one likes character. Following next is Jody Sweden, aka DJ Tanner, and my favorite character by far, Stephanie, who plays like the Uncle Jesse of the group, where the irresponsible singer just wants to live life and be free, but ends up finding along the way that, hey, I could be a responsible adult, I kind of like this. Number three, Andrea Bar Bar Barbara? Barbara? Bar Barbara? Barbara? Kimmy, the, the stupid, irresponsible, doesn't know what they're doing, Joey type of character. Then number four, we have Michael Campion, however you pronounce his name, I don't know. I'm not good with names, so just keep rolling with it. AKA Jackson, AKA J Money, <laughs> DJ's oldest son, who you'll forget after a few minutes after you watch him in a scene. He's pretty forgettable, boring, and a terrible actor. Then we have Elias Harger, maybe, I don't know, AKA Max, you know, the holy chalupa is type of kid, who plays the middle child, aka Stephanie's part in Full House. And he's the cute little guy that's just kinda, you know, that's his part, to be cute. Then we have Sonia Nicole Briggins, or something like that, aka Ramona, Kimmy's Hispanic daughter, sarcastic daughter, like she's all right. Then we have the baby of the family, Dishel, 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 Dishel. Fox Misset. What is up with these freaking names? AKA Tommy, the cute little baby that's just kind of there. And then we have this reoccurring character named Papa Fernando, who I hate more than anyone on the freaking show. This guy cannot act, and he certainly doesn't know how to do a freaking accent correctly. To say he belongs on a Disney Channel or a Nickelodeon show would actually be a compliment because this guy sucks. He doesn't deserve to be in any show because he sucks. He does not know how to freaking act. As soon as he comes on screen, I'm just like, whoa, look at my phone, hmm, text, text, text. Like the title of the show, Fuller House, is a ripoff in itself. We're all thinking that Fuller is the wordplay to Full House. Fuller House? Nah, it's not even about that. It's DJ's last name by marriage. <laughs> How dare you show, you, you made us look all stupid. We thought. Throughout the season, they did have some good jokes, but the basic concepts for the episodes is just basic, direct ripoffs from the original series. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna break this down for you. Sit tight, because we're gonna go on a crappy ride. Episode one we already covered, so episode two, moving day. That's the exact episode, like in freaking when DJ didn't want to move in with Stephanie and then she moves into the garage, like the exact same freaking crap, only with the little brothers. Episode three to five were okay in my book, so let's move on. Episode six, Legend of El. Expose, I don't know. The show was going good up until the first five episodes. Then they bring in this crap and they thought it was a good idea. I bet that some idiot wrote this and it was just like, hey, I got a good idea, guys. <laughs> You'll love it. Candace Cameron goes in a boxing ring and we make her look badass. Huh? Huh? Jeff Franklin's just like, I love it. 
And it's crap like that when I remember that, yeah, this is definitely rated G. Episode 7, Ramona's Not So Epic Party, where we introduce a new yet old concept to the show where DJ has to pick a man to date. Kind of like Viper and that Richie Rich guy that no one really knows his name or remembers it. Ha! Spoiler alert, she ends up picking herself. <laughs> Just like a woman to do that. <gasps> I didn't say that out loud, did I? Episode 8, Secret Lies and Fire Trucks. Bob Saga comes back to special guest, and his whole concept for being in that episode is to be upset about a couch, which is surprisingly really hilarious. Episode 9, War of the Roses, which basically is a reenactment of the love letter Secret Admirer episode in Full House. And just for the record, I did know it was Uncle Jesse who gave Becky the roses from the very beginning as soon as the question presented itself, because I'm just that good. Episode 10, A Giant Leap, which is a giant leap into cow maneuver, so we're just going to move on to episode 11. And speaking Speaking of cows, in episode 11, Partnerships in the Night, there's this cow scene in the kitchen, and which is basically a reenactment of the donkey scene in Full House, where they're trying to hide it from Danny, I mean DJ, and you know, that's the exact same scene, only different characters. In that episode, Kimmy and Stephanie also partner up, and basically like, you know, Joey and Jesse partner in like the advertising and the radio show. Same crap like that too. Ah, there's just too many similarities in these two shows. Episode 12, boring, move on. Episode 13, the finale, you expect there's gonna be some big thing and there's gonna be some big change. There ain't. There's just a stupid reenactment episode of the Jesse and Becky wedding where they go back and forth down the aisle because they're indecisive. That's the same thing with Kimmy, only she's a terrible actor. A ter terrible, terrible actor. I, I, it's true. I'm sorry, it is. I mean, the show wasn't that bad. There was just a lot of, there was a lot of predictability in the show and I didn't like that. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good. Well, they did put a lot of Michelle remarks. I changed so much diapers on Michelle, it felt like there was two of them or something like that and I was like ah and side note was it just me or did the show also feel like a musical at some point where it just had a random choreographed dance move mixed in the show like it just made no sense to me I don't know I thought it was a four out of five we're gonna stick with four out of five you don't have to agree with me you don't have to disagree with me but I am Angel Tony Pamatel aka Mini Tangle and thanks for watching ha. Michael Kempton, aka Jason Jackson. <laughs> the number four, Michael Captain. Captain. Uh...